Cine lens versus photo lens. What are the differences and which is right for you? In this video, we're comparing two popular options, the Sony 70-200 f2.8 G Master version two, and the DZO Kata Zoom 70-135 T2.9 Cine lens. You might be wondering why I'm pitting these two lenses against each other. Well, that's because they're my most used focal lengths. I am constantly using something in the 70-200 range and I'm mostly sitting around 100 to 120 millimeters for a lot of my work excluding ACAM interviews and things like that. Let's break down the ups and downs and details of these two specific lenses to give you a better overview of cine lens versus photo lens. First up, we're gonna talk about the build quality and feel. Let's start with the physical aspects. The Sony 7200 GM version two is a beast. It's professional grade photo lens built for durability and weather resistance. It's the lightest 7200 I have ever had but still translates to a solid, confidence-inspiring feel. The fact that it's a photo lens doesn't really matter, as Sony has done a good job making their new GM lenses very dual purpose. This lens has an aperture ring and a great manual focus feel to it. It does not have any gears for focus assist tools, but the rubber ring is great and gets the job done. Plus you can get some really cool 3D printed focus rings from someone like focusring.com for pretty cheap to fix that issue. The DZO Kata Zoom, on the other hand, is built like a tank. Its metal construction gives a more confidence inspiring feel, especially compared to the lighter photo lenses. Unlike photo lenses, the Kata Zoom features cinema standard 0.8 MOD gears for both the focus ring and aperture rings. These gears are designed for precise control with follow focus systems, essential for professional filmmaking setups. They're smooth, accurate, and built to last, ensuring consistent adjustments and repeatable takes. Similar to high-end photo lenses, the Kata Zoom utilizes an internal zoom mechanism. This means the lens barrel doesn't extend while zooming in and out, maintaining the balance and preventing unwanted lens creep. While not fully weather sealed like the Sony 7200 GM, the Kata Zoom offers a degree of protection. Rubber seals around key areas like the lens mount and controls help guard against dust and moisture, giving you peace of mind in less than ideal shooting conditions. Although heavier than photo lenses, cinema lenses and the Kata Zoom's weight serves a purpose. The solid metal construction and cinema grade features add heft, but this also translates to stability and reduced vibrations, especially when mounted on rigs or tripods. It's important to factor in the weight when you're choosing your setup, but for filmmakers prioritizing control and image quality, this trade-off is often worthwhile. Now let's get into optics and image quality. The Sony 7200 GM version two is renowned for its exceptional sharpness across the entire zoom range, even at f2.8. This makes it ideal for capturing fine details in almost all situations you throw at it. This lens produces beautiful creamy bokeh with smooth transitions and minimal distracting elements. Its 11 blade aperture contributes to a pleasing roundness, adding depth and dimension to portraits and close-up shots. Sony has done a great job effectively controlling chromatic aberration thanks to its advanced lens elements and coatings. This minimizes color fringing, even in high contrast scenes. This lens features Sony's latest autofocus technology, delivering lightning fast and accurate focusing capabilities for capturing fast moving subjects. It really does a great job keeping the subject in focus. Now for the DZO Kata Zoom. This lens is parfocal, which is a major win for filmmakers. The Kata Zoom maintains focus while zooming, eliminating the need for refocusing during takes. This ensures smooth focus transitions and saves valuable time when shooting moving subjects. This lens utilizes high quality cine glass, known for its accurate color rendition, pleasing skin tones, and natural highlights. This contributes to a filmic and cinematic look, ideal for narrative projects and commercials. The Kata Zoom uses T-stops instead of F-stops, ensuring consistent light transmission throughout the aperture range. This simplifies exposure calculations and avoids unwanted variations when switching lenses or filters. Kata Zoom has a 16 blade iris, providing smooth and precise control over exposure changes, creating natural looking transitions and avoiding abrupt shifts in brightness. Comparing these lenses is kind of hard to do. Both lenses are known for their sharp images, but the Sony 7200 GM II might have a slight edge due to its newer design and focus on a photographer's needs also, making it a little bit more versatile. Both offer aesthetically pleasing bokeh, but the Sony GM II tends towards a more classic round bokeh, while the Kata Zoom might showcase smoother transitions and a more filmic character. Still, 
very round, very beautiful out of focus areas with the Catazoom. Color rendition, the Catazoom Cine glass is known for its accurate and cinematic color, which might be preferred for video work. However, the Sony GM2 also produces high quality colors suitable for both photo and video. Now let's talk about the hefty topic of price. The 7200 GM, being a high-end professional photo and video lens, commands a premium price tag hovering around $3,000. It's an investment for sure. The DZO Cata Zoom, on the other hand, sits in a more budget-friendly, in the cinema world, price point, typically around $2,500. When it comes to value, both lenses offer exceptional performance for their respective markets. Here's the catch though. Cost shouldn't be the sole deciding factor. Here are some crucial aspects to consider. Ecosystem compatibility. Does the lens fit your existing camera system and other lenses? Us Sony users tend to stick with GM lenses or other Sony lenses due to their great usability with these cameras. While DZO offers various mounts like the E, L, RF, and X mounts, ensuring flexibility if you choose to change your system. Either lens should be a long-term investment. Choose a lens that grows with you. The Sony caters to a broader range, while the DZO excels in specific video applications. Ultimately, the better value depends on your individual needs and budget. If budget isn't a major constraint and you demand versatility, portability, and top tier photo performance, the Sony 7200 GM2 might be a worthwhile investment. But if you seek Cine specific features and value, the DZO Cata Zoom offers an excellent entry point into the Cine lens world. All right, we've dissected the Sony 7200 GM2 and the DZO Cata Zoom inside and out. Let's face it, both lenses are incredible performers. Remember the better option isn't about price, it's about the workflow you crave, the budget you have, and the experience you aim to create. There's no one size fits all answer. Experiment, research, and most importantly, trust your creative vision. Both lenses are capable of bringing your stories to life and you need to choose the one that empowers you to tell them in the way that you envision. So with that said, hope you guys got something from this. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And thanks to DZO Films for letting me use these lenses for the last month so I can make some reviews on them. And thanks to you for watching this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.